All right, cool. So let's check out what we got going on in our face. I think proportionally we're close, right? But it doesn't have the exact same appeal or feeling that I'm getting from the read from the character over here. And I think some of that is due to the volume that I'm getting in the chest and just overall curve that I'm getting from the front of the character. So I would at least like to play around with that just a little bit here in the beginning before we move forward to anything else. So to do that, we're gonna be using the Transpose Master plugin. It's just up in your Z plugin menu under Transpose Master T Pose Mesh. So that's where we're gonna start and try to make just some quick little changes here and there, see what we can do, and then probably work a little bit more on the face. Angel, what's up? First time being here. Are you in animation? No, no, I am a 3D modeler. Uh, Diamond, how's it going? Uh, hello, big fan of your works. Glad to make it this time. Awesome. Glad to have you here, Diamond. Welcome to everybody else that is joining us. You're not too late, don't worry. Haven't missed really anything yet. I literally just booted this boy up. Now we're going to start making some, some larger form scale changes here around the front of our torso. So let's see. Let's get a quick mask going on here. Something pretty simple. This is something I find really uh, frustrating, but it's just kind of the, the nature of how working on this kind of stuff is. When you have geometry that is at multiple you know, different resolutions, you're gonna get a discrepancy if I were to use something like a move brush here. You can see how that's starting to move out and poke through the geometry. That is because this is a lot more dense and we're getting a lot more form kind of pulled out there than I would on something like this. It's got a lot more points for me to grab with my brush than this, uh, than this shirt does. You can see the, the difference there if I turn on the poly frame for you. But uh, essentially what I want to do is just kind of play around with maybe um, just kind of flattening out his chest a little bit more. I don't have like a super straightforward plan for how I want to do this. Mainly just kind of experiment and come up with something that looks a little bit closer than what we have right now. So we'll mask that off, invert our mask, and I do have symmetry on, so I'll be playing around with that. So we can turn on and off perspective while doing this. We have the new perspective camera, so I actually uh, am loving having real perspective in ZBrush now with the latest update. It's very nice. But yeah, I think we're starting to get there a little bit better now. A lot of this like it's a kind of too rounded in the face. So if I can pull that back, maybe get more of like a sharp angle there for the chest, I think that'll feel a little bit better. So we'll play around with this a little bit longer here and then head back out of T-Pose. Uh, do you work for a company I or for 3D modeling or do you do freelance? I do freelance, I'm a full-time freelancer, Angel. Steve, what's up? Hi from Peru. Well, welcome everybody from Peru. Where is everybody else joining us from tonight? I think we did this during our last stream, actually. It's pretty crazy to see all the different places that people are hanging out and watching from. So if you're watching from, let's say the US, let's get let's get like a United States shout out because that's where I live. I live east. East Coasterly. I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. Not close to the coast, but you know, around around the coast. You could see it if you're up really, really high. <laughs> um, shout outs. Let's let's hear it, guys. Where's everybody hanging out tonight? This is feeling a little bit better. Let's just flip back here real fast. So I'm, he's just feeling. He's kind of feeling a bit hamstery. If, if <laughs> something like that. I, I'm not sure exactly what I would say. I don't want to go super flat. That feels very, um, very awkward and it's just an uninteresting shape from the profile. So I'm not a huge fan of that. But I do like that we're getting a little bit more flat in the, uh, the face and trying to get more of that hit kind of around the peck. Kind of like he's puffing out his chest a little bit. Uh, but yeah, let's see. In terms of width, I think we're actually pretty good. If we were to line that up, I think that would be 
fairly close. There might be some discre discrepancies, discrepancies in, uh, in proportions up here in the nose. Let me try scaling this. Let's go from back here. Let me take a look. I don't think it's too much. It's just a little bit. Feeling feeling a little bit too small. All right, let's head on back out of T pose. Watch those changes roll through. Hello from Russia. What is up, Alexander? Danny, hanging out in Greece. Welcome. Angel, also on the east coast of the U.S., down in Miami, Florida, the very, very tip. Used to live in Cincinnati, Ohio. Well, we, we share that in common. Uh, much prefer it because I miss the nature there. <laughs> much more suburban area. That's right, chest out. That's, that's the way to do it. That's the, that's the ideal male body right here. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, suburban. Suburban, yes, I understood. I gotcha. Juan, what's up, man? Welcome. Uh, I also have a bottle in here somewhere. Where'd he go? A thick, thick boy bottle. Let me see. And we got our bag. That's right. I made a folder. Typically, I don't. Um, I I think I only made that folder so that I can move some stuff around. Typically, I don't do a lot of organization in the like during this stage, once I'm in a more finished area, more finished stage, and once I have like quite a bit more um, sub tools, then I'll start organizing a little bit more. Right now it's like not super um, detrimental towards my, towards my workflow. So it's not a huge deal. Let's see, where do we want our little Nitro Stalker bottle? And I did not read that. I'm guessing this is like his his tiger protein powder or something. This is how he got so swole. So if you guys wanna get as swole as this guy, go out and buy some nitro. And for the hand, let's see. I thought I, I, thought I mirrored this over to the other side, I guess. Oh, yes I did, it's just hidden. All right. Is there, there's probably a couple additional things that I want to do to this hand before, nah, you know what, nah. I was gonna say before we go into posing this arm, but I say screw it, let's go ahead and start figuring out the shape of this arm a little bit more. Let's see, what do we got here? Coming out a little bit more, that elbow hit is quite a bit lower. Let's do some quick measurements. Here's the V of the shirt, then the zipper, and the bottle, the top of the bottle kind of lines up about with that zipper. So we got this, about a zipper length there, and our bottle could be probably a bit taller and maybe just larger in general. We'll get that somewhere about there. We can line this up later to get that a little bit more accurate. For now though, it's totally fine to just kind of eyeball it, especially when you're just blocking out a pose. Not, not in need of being perfect. So from there, measuring the top of the bottle to where that elbow hit is, you can see that that elbow is quite a bit lower than uh, what we got for that bottle. So that elbow hit is just about under kind of where that surface turn on the bottle is. So it's somewhere around there. So it's a very, very, very low elbow. A little, little bit of a weird shape going on there for sure. Now we just have to kind of play around with the profile here. It helps to um, have posed a lot of characters and understand anatomy and just kind of how forms change. Even for something so stylized, I find it to be um, be quite helpful. Well, it looks like we got some stuff poking through there, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, watching while doing freelance work in LA. Well, welcome, Kevin. I hope you are having a great day. As well as everybody else joining us. What is everybody else working on? Anything cool? It doesn't have to be ZBrush or sculpture or even art related. What are you, what are you cool kids working on today? I was working on a new course earlier today, something that I've been working on for quite a long time. I, I believe I mentioned it during my last stream and I'll talk about it probably a little bit later as well. Let's keep going on a uh, tiger boy. We got a little bit of a curve there, a little bit of a bow out here. 
And we just need to get sharper. Get more of a bend going on here. For really sharp bends in the elbow, I like to separate the upper and lower portion of the arm because working on this crease, your little, uh, what's it? I think it's called your weenus, right? Isn't that your weenus? The opposite of your elbow. Uh, it's a little tough. It's a little tough to get in there and sculpt on a lot of that. So I find it helpful to often separate that out and work on it one segment at a time. So here we have the top, and we'll just you know do a quick close holes on this. Doesn't need to be clean or anything, not at this stage at least. And you can just subdivide both of these a couple times and start working on these a little bit more. So let's see, what do we got going on here? We got some pretty crazy funky stuff going on with this arm, that's for sure. Let's try to get that a little bit closer to what I'm seeing there. And I'll reapply that color back later. I actually started sculpting this uh, character in color, which was a nice change of pace. I don't know if I'll do that more in the future. I really like to be able to see my form in the early stages and sculpting with color can be a little distracting towards the shapes that you're attempting to create. Uh, but I think it kind of turned out fine for the stage that we are at. There are probably some areas that I can't notice as well with the material that I have that need to be cleaned up, such as kind of in the crevice of where that mouth is uh, translating into the head shape there. So that's definitely a place where, you know, I can't really see quite as well. Those are just some little things that I like to pay attention to. So if you do like to sculpt in color, do turn that off from time to time. Make sure to get in there and work with just kind of a flat or black and white material. I am using my custom clay materials, which are available on my Gumroad, of course, which I don't have a link to, but it's just Google Gumroad and Folygon and it should pop up. All right. Let's give this a Dynamesh. I think this resolution's way too low. I can't remember the scale we're at, so let's undo that. Let's go a little bit higher here. All right, cool, cool, cool. So again, the reason I separate this is so that I have the opportunity to work on kind of how the form of the forearm kind of translates into that creased area really hard to get in there and kind of sculpt within that crease if you do not have these separated. And you're definitely able to do it, I just find it a little bit easier to work with if these are split up. And where is our hand? Our hand is kind of tucked right up underneath here. So let's get him into position. I'm going to just kind of break everything. This character is already broken, so I don't really feel too bad about doing something like this where the elbow hit is way down here, and then I'm not sure if this is supposed to be an elbow or a forearm hit, but we have that kind of basic shape in there. We probably need to figure out the angle of this arm a little bit better though, to make sure it's looking good from all our different angles. Uh, Mim Diamond, working on some hair cards. That sounds like fun. Uh, for personal work, just for fun. Awesome. Some hair cards. I really enjoy sculpting hair geometrically. I think it's really tough, but it's definitely really rewarding, especially when you do it well. Just having something represent hair and actually represent it well is just, it's just nice, especially when you get to that finished stage where everything starts coming together, which is nice for just like all characters in general. But in hair in particular, I find hair to be be very, very difficult. All right, let's get up here towards our lid and make this a little bit taller. And you could probably stand to bevel these edges so they're not so boring. So let's use our Z modeler brush. Bevel, whoops, not bridge, bevel. Edge loop complete, looks good to me. Something like that there, and I'll do it on the bottom edge as well. 
And I think I will also crease those. The hard surface trick to rule them all. Bevel all your edges like crazy. <laughs> it's true. It makes everything just visually more interesting. All right, mask pen. And I just want to try bowing that out a little bit like I've done with the bottle. It's going to be a very subtle effect, but... Yeah, a little bit more rounded than that. All right, cool. That's looking a bit closer. We got our arm in a basic position. Let's make sure the bottle is kind of fitting with that. Not penetrating into the shirt. <laughs> it's kind of just like floating here. If you look at the bottom of the model, you got this gap in his hands, so that's a little weird. We'll try to make that interact, I think, a little bit better than uh, what I'm seeing in that 2D concept. I don't think that'll be super hard, though. So we'll move our little hand that way. I'm gonna line up our arm a bit better, and we are starting to get there. Cool. So this is how I, um, you know, once I start getting into posing, this is pretty much how I block out all my poses. Um, it kind of depends on the base geometry that you have. It can be a little bit easier if you have something that's, you know, low poly that you can step down to your lowest subdiv and then manipulate. Uh, I think my pants, for instance, have subdivision levels. So I would step down and then start manipulating the form at that stage. But I pretty much always say expect you, uh, expect to like mess up a little bit of your geometry. It's probably gonna be a lot more than a little bit, <laughs> but um, expect some things to kind of break. Uh, it's pretty much inevitable. Um, form and muscle and skin stretches and, you know, if you look at my huge bicep here, the shape of the arm completely changes, right, as you, as you move and flex the arm. So same thing with the forearm as you move and twist, you know, bones spin around each other, your radius and ulna kind of twist and unwind from one another as they rotate. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of complexity in the body. In the shoulder girdle, it's even it's even dumber. <laughs> the shoulder the shoulder girdle is like one of the most complicated areas of the the body, uh, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot going on there. So expect as you are posing that some stuff is going to need to change, and you're going to have to fix and re-sculpt a few things. So if you're sculpting a neutral pose where everything's anatomically beautiful and perfect, and then you raise up the arms in the air. There's going to need to be some stuff that needs to be fixed. Kevin, what's up? Uh, do those creases from Z Modeler stay if you ever wanted to export to Maya? Or is it better to add control loops for subdivision levels? So, uh, as an OBJ file, uh, you know, off the top of my head, I don't actually know if creases stick in an OBJ file. Uh, I would think that they would for an FBX for sure, but. That would have to be something I would have to double check on. Normally, I guess it would depend what your purposes are. Like, you're talking about the bottle, I think. So if you wanted to add in some control loops, that would for sure work, obviously. So you could just, you know, a crease is essentially just getting those two edge loops really tight together in there. So create some control loops. You could always subdivide up and actually get the physical form. If it's something for 3D printing, this is what I would do. If it's something for physical production, which is what I do a lot of the time. Uh, typically, I don't need to take creases out of ZBrush. And to be completely honest, I don't know. I would say try it with an FBX. Uh, I, you know, Experimentally, I would try it with an OBJ. It wouldn't be that hard to do either. Let's do it. Let's do a copy tool, paste tool. One tool, delete other, and deletes everything except for your selected object there. And then we can just run an export on our tiger. And we'll call this bottle, of course. Bada boom, cool. And then uh, I'll duplicate, and you know what, here, just to make sure that it is a different object here, we'll import it over top of this cube. Bottle, OBJ. Boom, no creases, no creases, not in an OBJ at least. In a uh, FBX file, might be a little bit different though, really not sure. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of that. Uh, to, my, to my knowledge, OBJs are pr 
pretty simplistic. So I use OBJs for export exporting for um, uh, for 3D printing, and then I convert them to STLs in another application. Um, just because it's a little bit easier to make sure everything's going exactly the way I need it. There is some STL exporting stuff that you can do here in ZBrush, but um, just to kind of keep everything within the pipeline, within the uh, exact same scale, I like using my, uh, my OBJ exporter. Uh, looking really fun? Well, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Renaud Galand, maybe. Oh, man. I'm, uh, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that. Let's, uh, let's switch arms over here to our other side real quick and make sure that we are kind of getting this in a little bit of a better position. Let's see. This hand is so much larger than this bag, but that's fine. And the bag I have actually might need to be scaled down a little bit, which is not a problem. All right, so we got our base hand there. Let's do a quick little transpose line rotation. Getting that facing the right way. So we want our knuckles facing us and heading off in that direction, which we have. Get the thumb in a little bit of a better position. And I'm thinking that bag needs to be scaled down, which is not super hard to do. Let's actually um, line up our image over here with our tiger, and we can kind of scale check this bottle and arm position as well. Because I think this is going to need to uh, go down a little bit. If we look at where the hand is in relation to the jacket, you can kind of see that the hand is a little bit lower over on uh, our concept image. So we'll just grab this guy, turn down our opacity, scale him up, easy enough. And I do not have um, perspective on right now. We'll just kind of align this and get like a basic idea for proportions. Uh, I don't think it'll be too big of a deal. So our bottle, it looks like our bottle is a little bit too short, which is easy enough to fix. Just kind of move this over to the side and do a quick little stretch here. Oops. Let's kind of pull that down just a tad. Beautiful. Let's move our hand down as well. And there is some perspective at play in the size and scale of that hand. We might be making our hands a little bit larger though based on what I'm seeing in, uh, in both of our kind of overlays here. Uh, and then for our arm over here, let's see, let's merge these down real quick. And just very quickly do a quick, very quickly, 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 and just do a quick silhouette match. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just in a general uh, vicinity there, that's fine. All right, uh, and then our bag. We need to scale down our bag, of course, which we can just do with our new folder by transposing the entire set. Switching over to our 3D gizmo. Oh, we do not want to transpose that. We do want to transpose our bag, however. There we go. So let's see. Go to Unmask Mesh Center Home, or sorry, Unmask Mesh Center. Fix our rotation. Beautiful. And now, now we can scale this down. All right. So it was not a huge difference. And positionally, the, the, for everything with the angle, I think, I think we're pretty good now. Uh, the only thing that might need to change, or that does definitely need to change, is the angle of our straps, which, which is very simple for us to do. So let's see, we've got our straps here. Let me turn on solo mode real quick. And we just need to shift the angle more towards the character for both of these, and I think that'll do it. So let's get in here and take a look at our bag a little bit more closely. Thanks for testing. Yeah, no problem, Kevin. Like I said, pretty quick and easy thing to do. All right, let me run and uh, I was going to do an auto groups, but you know what? Let's just, we'll just mask this real quick. I think it'll be a bit easier. Let's hold on to our poly groups for now. We might want those back later. All right, and I'll just kind of align my camera here, get a little bit of a better rotation. 
And let's see, we're pretty much almost straight up and down there. Let's go a little bit more straight. And maybe from what I'm seeing here, I think we need to get a little bit more tension flowing this way. Oh, and you know what? I just now noticed that. Looks like we accidentally grabbed a couple of those polys over there. So we want to make sure that we have a clean mask. My bad. Luckily, we made like two rotations, so it's not that big of a deal. Ooh, come on. What are you doing here? Huh? Look at that. It wants to really come along with us, doesn't it? Here, let's do this. Auto groups, just to make sure. I was originally going to do this, and then I said, ah, you know, I might want those poly groups later. But we'll just do this. Make it easier on ourselves. I need to make it more difficult than it needs to be. And let's just work on the tension a little bit. Now, because these are something that he is holding on to, these straps, they're nice and taut. So we look at the concept here. We got these nice straight lines and we really want to retain that for the forms of the, uh, the straps here. So whatever we do with these straps, whatever angle they're at, we need to make sure that everything stays nice and tight. Ooh, let's see here. Can I toggle visibility? I can't remember. Here. Let's turn these back on real fast. All right. Let's keep this nice and tight. Don't let anything get all wobbly. Use a nice big move brush. And I pretty much want these to be straight lines. If you're having trouble doing that, you can always delete some excess edge loops to make that a little bit easier on yourself. All right, we'll just realign that. And we can probably move that out a little bit more. Actually, the angle of our bag is more so the issue there. That actually looks very close. So I think I'll hold on to that position for the purple strap there. And we can now do the other one, which essentially just needs to stretch on over closer to our purple strap. So let's see, let's grab what we want here. Use our move brush. And I'm pretty much just going to yoink that over nice and quick. And then we can fix the rest. And then, of course, we need to get the hand in there, interacting with the strap and holding on to it nice and tight, which is probably the more difficult thing to do here. Hands are tough, but when hands are, when you're trying to sculpt something that's holding on to something else, it's just even tougher, even more tough. All right. Feeling a lot closer to what I'm seeing in the concept, that's for sure. Go ahead and make sure we're feeling like there's enough tension there because it's kind of like swinging this bag as he's walking. And we'll turn everything back on. All right, that tension is feeling much better now. Let me uh, move this back over to our corner here. And I think that's good for a quick little lineup on some different parts and pieces to check proportions and everything else. Uh, let's continue on with our hands. We were noticing that our hands were feeling a bit, a bit thin. And because they need to be more rounded, I'm wondering what would happen if we just ran a straight up inflate on these bad boys. How, how inflated can we get before things start getting completely out of, I was going to say out of hand, but I guess, I guess, out of hand. I do despise puns, but I guess I, I did that one on myself. Hmm. 
I don't know. I, uh, I don't think that looked terrible. So you got to be careful with your fingers. The more you um, kind of sculpt and work with those, the tighter those creases can get in between there. And it can be really tough to work with these when the geometry is starting to combine like what we're seeing right now. But as long as I don't dynamesh or do anything uh, too stupid here, we should uh, we should be fine. So let me um, let me check on that inflate value again. If I can do the same thing to the other hand, we're right around 15. So just click on inflate. Whoops. Inflate, please. Make sure we're good. Yep. All right. Inflate 15. Boom. All right. That scale is definitely feeling quite a bit closer to what I'm seeing. In the reference. And for this hand over here, let's see. So he's kind of holding it. It's a little weird because his index finger is, it looks like it's positioned in between the gap of the straps. And then his thumb is kind of, I think we have a similar situation to what's kind of going on over here where it feels a little floaty. So I say we try to make that interaction feel uh, a little bit more concrete, a little bit more uh, interactive. Not quite as floaty. Let's see, let's get this lined up here with the sleeve. One thing that I really like to do for my geometry where, uh, specifically for clothing a lot of the time, I like to use uh, the illusion of thickness instead of giving my clothing actual thickness and du essentially doubling your poly count or increasing the poly count above double most of the time. So you have the uh, edge that needs to span across, it needs to bridge those polys. So one technique that I like to do for giving the illusion of thickness, specifically on like sleeves or pant legs or jackets or anything like this, I like to do a little mask, and you can spend however much time you want on this. You do a quick mask, push that geometry in, and scale it in as well. And just kind of push that all the way up and in, and voila. Especially since this is facing down, you get a nice little illusion that this sleeve has thickness all the way up and through it. Whereas really it's just kind of right up through here. So this is something that I do a lot for uh, stuff for production, especially uh, because if we do a little cross section view here and I turn on double, uh, we can't obviously print or have something molded with actual thickness because we'd run into an issue of having all this kind of free space in here where uh, you know, your mold would lock and you could never do anything with it. So with this technique, we actually have this nice little taper and really the thinnest area right here is really, it doesn't exist that long. So our minimum thickness, if we can get to that point, it really doesn't need to um, exist for, you know, the entire length of something. So it wouldn't be super easy for it to break off. So especially this way, we get that nice taper on the inner side of that mesh. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. But for those that do, uh, play around with this. Might help you out in the future for, for some molding and such. But let's do an undo because we accidentally had a couple, a couple little mistakes in there. And I'll kind of soften that. I don't really need a super hard or sharp edge. And I think it feels a lot nicer when it's soft. At least for this character. Uh, I, I think I'll leave that sleeve alone. Uh, let's get back on over here to our other arm. Realign some stuff here. Take a look at our wrist. Try to bend this a little bit better. Get that going up into the right direction. And our bottle. Like I said, it's a little floaty, so let's try to get this uh, interacting with our hand in a bit more physical way. And our lower arm here. So we don't really have this hanging down. I'm a stickler for silhouette and form. I'm trying to be uh, 
a little bit more casual on this dude, but still, if it's not a shape or form that's really present, I'm not gonna sculpt it. We wanna be as accurate as we can within reason. We don't need to spend twice the amount of time making sure everything is pixel perfect. All right, now let's do a quick little Ziri mesh on these. I can keep them nice and low poly because they're really simple shapes. Because they're separate meshes, we should actually get two different poly groups. Yep. Which is fine for what we need here. Uh, and we actually lost quite a bit of volume with that remesh. So let's just up the poly count just to make sure we're not breaking the rules completely here. You know what? I lied. Let's stick in Dynamesh a little bit longer here and just play around. Try to create something a little bit more physically accurate. And try that now. We'll have to clean up some of this. You can see how messy this shape has gotten here. A lot of the times I just do quick strokes with the clay tubes brush or something like that, just to kind of start getting some volume in there. And it's looking a lot nicer for sure. This curve, look at that line, how it kind of like tucks down. If we can get that to follow that a little bit more closely, that would be cool. So let's thin this out. Try to line up some stuff a little bit better here with our concept silhouette. Biceps looking a little thin. And some extra volume up in here. Same with the tricep. Let's see, what do we got going on over here? At least for the outside of the arm, we don't want to extend that too f too much further because it's already matching the silhouette pretty well. But I can thicken this up more towards the center. And also get it feeling a bit more round right now. We're kind of getting a bit misshapen. That's why we got to look at everything from as many different angles as we can. It's really easy for this to happen. ready to dynamesh and remesh these together. So to do this, I will keep my poly paint off. I don't have any poly paint applied to this mesh right now. If, if you're sculpting along and something like this happens to you, uh, and your mesh turns black and you're freaking out and you're like, oh, I can't see anything, what's going on? Uh, all that's happened is that you have swapped your color to black. This is one of the most common, you know, first, first things that people ask about, you know, the first one being, hey, what's going on? Why do I have a, a bunch of things on my, my canvas, right? This is another one of those really common ones. To alleviate it, just come over here, swap your color, click and drag. The reason why it's swapping the color on your mesh is because if you don't have this little paintbrush on, um, or you don't have any material or poly paint applied, your geometry will just simply take on the material and color that you have selected at that time. So if I swap my material, you'll see that it'll change on the fly. Whereas if instead I filled it in and then swap my material or changed my color, nothing changes on the screen. So what we wanna do is we wanna keep poly paint off because Ziri Mesher, I'm sorry, Dynamesh can only remember one of two things, poly groups and poly paint. 
So if I have polypaint applied, I need to turn it off temporarily or just not use it right now while I am attempting to retain uh, poly group information. So I'm going to add in some subdivs. I am going to run a Dynamesh. And you'll see that the polygroups have retained through that remesh. Uh, the next thing I'll do is just kind of plane this out a little bit, get that a bit more flat through there, make sure that's good to go. And I'm going to do another Z remesh. And this is why we kept our polygroups, and this time with keep groups turned on. So what this will essentially do for us, we'll let it calculate. Um, it will essentially put a nice, or it should, put a nice clean edge loop right where those two polygroups are separated. We'll see how it does. It can be a little finicky sometimes as you play around with it. And depending on your uh, poly count and everything else and shape of the geometry, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, room for error. But it looks like we got a pretty good result. The surrounding area maybe not so much, but this is definitely something that we can work with and continue to shape up from there. So I am going to leave that for now and we can kind of move on to, to working on something else. So since we kind of blocked out the basic shape there, let's continue on and work on some more stuff. If anything, I'll just pull this arm all the way up to where it needs to be connecting because we're kind of missing the mark up there. Not really flowing all the way up to our shoulder like it is on the other side. All right. Let's see, let's see. Uh, I could work on the hood more. Been wanting to do some more stuff with the hood. We did that a little bit during our last stream. But I say we continue to work on our face and evolve and evolve our character. Let's see, let's grab a couple things up here and just start going crazy. I don't typically like to poly paint too much in for for like shadowed areas. I typically like the form to do that on its own, but in certain areas like here in the nostrils, since it's such a distinct difference, I think it's kind of fine to play around with. Oh, and I wanted to very much so clean up our face right around here where we're getting disturbingly messy. Take a minute to clean that up. Just help transition the form a little bit nicer through here. here in the lips we could use some work I think during our last stream we also worked on our lips just kind of getting the angle of that shape a little bit closer which is definitely feeling a lot better now uh, we're cleaning that up liking that quite a bit more and let's see Honestly, our eyes need to get a little bit smaller, or more so our eyelids, lower lids need to close up a bit more. If we, if I can grab my eyebrows, uh, we need to make our eyebrows quite a bit thicker as well as lower. If we look at the shape, that's essentially, is very tiny, so let me zoom in here and talk about this for a second. If we look at the shape, it's essentially just a triangle, very, very narrow triangle. And I have a little bit too much form going on in my brow and I need to pull that straight across to match what we're seeing here. That plus, like I mentioned, the eyebrows getting a little thin and the shape could probably use a little bit of work, mainly flattening, get that a bit closer. And then let's get in there and work on the actual shape of the eye, specifically the top portion and brow. We got a lot of geometry going on in here. And because this is so thick, it's a little tough to work on. So I will chop all that off and only work on my eye region. Makes this quite a bit easier to work on.
Just using some quick masks. Let me mask this off as well. Ooh, it's gonna be a little frustrating. Make sure that's masked correctly. There we go. All right, now let me pull this brow down and start to get this a bit more flat. Where are our eyebrows? All right. So just using a move brush, begin to slowly pull that down and get that a bit more flat. Oh. Expression is so very important, and especially in the eyes. Your eyes and mouth are your, the most expressive part of your character, and your eyes are going to be the first thing that people really focus in on. And this guy's eyes are so, so freaking tiny. It's, uh, it's a little tough to get in here and work on these too much. So most likely what we'll do, get those eyebrows back wherever they went. Definitely need to slide these down. Get them a bit closer. Work on our angle as well. Uh, Bassam, what's up? How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. We are just working on a thick boy tiger here. Been working on him for the past couple streams. I think we've done two, about two hours each. So we're about at the four hour mark. Getting to play around more with the shapes in his face right now. And I don't know what we'll do after the face. We'll have to take a step back and just look at everything. See how everything's coming together. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Sean. Sean Lake. Welcome. Yeah, he is a very fun character. It's very, very cool. And very, um, very talented concept artist. Dan Kelby, the original 2D artist. You guys should definitely check him out at some point. He's got some cool stuff. Very much reminds me of um, Zootopia or uh, what's the other anthropomorphic movie I'm thinking of? Maybe Sing? Is that it? I haven't seen that one. I have seen Zootopia though. I like Zootopia a lot. I think Sing is the one with the, the gorilla if I'm remembering correctly. I think he's a gorilla. And they have like an American Idol or talent-esque show or something. I can't remember. Like I said, I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> the, the style is uh, very reminiscent of both of those movies though. All right, let's try forcing this down even further. Come on, brow. Get moving. Flatter. More triangular. So I think I want to avoid a super strong shadow up through the top portion of this lid. I was trying to get a little bit more 3D form in here last time we were working on this, but I, I honestly think we're just getting a little too complex for, for what we need to actually create. That's very common. You know, overmodeling is a symptom of habits, typically. So I know that, you know, I want to make this a 3D character, but I'm kind of going a little bit too far in the form that I need to create. So we just need to take it a step back, get a little bit more flat in the eyes, not only in the shape of the top of the lid and brow there, but also just in, in general, we need to get a little bit more flat through here. Let me take some time to do that. Make sure our masking is not screwed up through here. Let's just take a look. Take a, take a look at what we got going on. Potato Man, what's up? 
This looks great. Well, thank you, man. That's very nice of you. Uh, how can you make retopology? Well, there's a lot of different ways to go about that. Uh, is there a way to do that in, a tw in the 2019 version? There is. There is the older method using um, Z-spheres, as well as uh, using Z-remesher, Z Z-remesher 3.0. If you're trying to get animation-ready topology, though, uh, you're probably going to want to use the Z-modeler, or I'm sorry, um, Z-sphere method, which I personally am not a huge fan of, but that is how you can get uh, the most controlled topology. Something like the topology brush, you know, there's a lot of different ways to go about creating form here. And then all in combination with the Z modeler brush, one of my favorite recent additions to ZBrush. That plus, I kind of forgot about this until somewhat recently, but the lazy snap with the lazy brush, or the, um, with, uh, lazy mouse, sorry. The lazy snap is awesome if you're doing something like any kind of alpha stroke where you're trying to get something really clean, say something like a, a stitch or a seam line, and you want to continue that curve. Oh, it's so nice. I was using it here just today on another project. Very cool little tool. Something that you don't realize you need until, until you need it. <laughs> um, by zero measure, or should I draw my topology on my model, then make a zero measure? Thank you. Um, it kind of depends. If you're trying to get animation ready topology, uh, and you have something that's high resolution already, you're probably not going to be able to get animation ready topology out of something like zero measure. You can get amazing results out of zero measure very quickly. If you look down here at my pantaloons, these were done, I, like all of this is, uh, most of this geometry is Z-remesh. We got some material stuff screwing up here, but that's very easy to just correct. Um, if we look at this sleeve over here, you know, this is Z-remeshed as well. And then this was like stretched and pushed in, so that's why the polys are a little bit screwed up there. But like I said, you can get some really nice stuff out of Z-remesher. You're probably not going to get animation-ready topology, though, simply because uh, with manual retopology, you can control where you want additional edge loops to go. So you can control where something needs to bend or deform. That could be for a human character. It could be for a big, thick tiger boy like this. It's just very dependent on the form that you're trying to create. And that is why you will always kind of need manual retopology for, uh, for you know, the variety of different forms and shapes that you can create. Uh, for something like this, I'm not doing any manual retopology other than what I've already done using the techniques and tools here in ZBrush. It's not really necessary. We're just kind of sculpting away here. And most of the stuff that I do either way is for physical production. So a lot of the time I uh, don't do uh, animation topology. I'm more of just a sculpting boy myself, setting stuff up for physical production. So stuff like toys, life-size figures for museums, amusement parks, and that sort of thing. Beautiful. All right. Thanks a lot and great work. Well, thank you. Not sure what happened to my chat. Messing up over here. Potato Man, I do freelance work full time. Worked on stuff for Madagascar, Hotel Transylvania, Pokemon, done a couple toys for them, Hasbro, uh, where's my Barbie? Uh, one of the first toys that I ever sculpted that went all the way through to production is, it's a Barbie vinyl toy, it's back on my, my desk behind me, I'll grab it if you want to see it, but yeah, uh, I've done a bunch of stuff, Shrek, um, I'm forgetting a billion other things, but yeah. Museum of Flight in Seattle, all sorts of all sorts of fun little 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 projects. And now we're working on a thick boy, a thick boy tiger, and his eyes need to come up a little bit here. Okay. 
because they're looking a little bit too lazy, a little bit too like lackadaisical, too sleepy maybe. Whereas this guy, he lo he's kind of like glaring a little bit, or at least that's the feeling that I get. Where is that? I'm trying to find out where that eye corner is. Any recommendations for finding and seeking out work? And... Here's my Barbie. <laughs> this was one of the first, one of the first, not one of the first toys that I ever got to like work on and sculpt, but one of the first um, toys that I actually got to work on, sculpt, and went all the way through uh, to production, and that you're able to buy right now. I don't know what Barbie movie it's from. I don't know if it says on it. It does not say on it. But yeah, you can buy these in like, I was going to say Toys R Us, but that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, you can find them online somewhere. <laughs> Maybe look up Barbie uh, vinyl toy. There was uh, another one, but um, this was the first one that I got to do for them. Uh, and then you said any recommendations for finding and seeking out work? Not, not really. I guess it's kind of very dependent on what you're looking for. But the, uh, the more you do, it's kind of like a, a snowball effect. The more you'll get recommended, your snowball will grow bigger. Essentially, you know, you have a little ball of snow and you roll it down a hill and it keeps ga uh, gaining traction and exponentially growing larger and larger as it rolls down the hill and collects more snow. It's the same thing. So try to get your foot in the door, get that first step, and uh, more will come your way. Uh, freelance work is... It's tough though, it's tough to like really get to a point where you can support yourself and you know have an ongoing uh, list of clientele or an ongoing uh, set of things that you can actually work on. It takes some time to build up. So I would not, in terms of additional recommendations, I would not, you know, if you're at a stable job right now, I wouldn't just take a leap and jump and go, um, go try to do freelance work full time. I don't think you're gonna be very successful unless you're just already, you already have a huge uh, clientele list that you can do work for and they are chomping at the bit to get you. But um, honestly, that's few and far between. So like I said, I would recommend making sure you have a strong list of clients before you would attempt going like full time with, with working freelance. Ugh. I don't know though. Freelance is fun. It's not for everybody. It's a lot of work. It's tough stuff. I cannot like see this dude's face. It's so freaking tiny. I'm gonna pull up this image over on my other monitor. Just a little guy here. I'm zooming in. I don't know what I would call this expression. <laughs> it's not angry. I don't know. Let's see. Let's go, uh, let's go T-Pose, Transpose Master. I'm gonna bend his eyes in a little bit more, get a little bit more angled down. Try to make him look a tiny bit angrier. Uh, good, mo good morning. It is, ooh, my ear geometry is, uh, my normals are flipped. We'll, we'll have to fix that once we get out of here. It is 7 p.m. here, but good morning to you and uh, anybody else that's watching at, uh, at in the morning, I was gonna say at night, and in the morning, welcome everybody. Have a wonderful day or night, wherever you guys are. Really, that's about all I wanted to do. Let's just make a quick little change there in the eyebrows. Uh, 
almost almost noon there on on Wednesday. Ah, you are a complete day ahead of me. I'm sure. Well, dang. I'm trying to think where you would be, because the I am minus five GMT, so you have to be like way over in Nippon land, maybe. East Asia somewhere, I would guess. Potato Man, no worries, man. No worries. Happy to help. Uh, so our ear geometry is flipped. The reason it doesn't look flipped right now is because I have double turned on. Make sure we don't have any subdivision levels. There we go. Was there anything else that was flipped here before I move on? It's always really frustrating when I... I, I do this from time to time just because I'm extruding geometry and depending on the direction you extrude it with the Z modeler brush, it can mess up your normals, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's a whole thing. That's feeling uh, just a, a bit closer to me. What's going on here? Look at that silhouette, how it like dips in and wiggles all around. Let's get a bit more volume from there. New Zealand, you are far, far west of me then. Or I guess that would still be, uh, <laughs> that'd still be uh, far east, right? <laughs> very, very far east. All the way east, so far east it's west. Good stuff. Send selected. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Just trying to clean that curve up a little bit. It's feeling a lot nicer to me. Still looking a bit weird from the front view. Let me see if I can fix that. Oh, goodbye, Polypaint. What's going on? Uh, okay. I see. There we go. Right, just trying to fix the, uh, the silhouette there as it wraps around that nose that internal silhouette line. Let's try to make that feel a little bit nicer. And that's feeling quite a bit better to me now. So really um, kind of small changes to the face, but they add up very fast. And another thing I would like to try doing is getting rid of some of the extra bulk in our, <laughs> in our everything in the back. There's just a lot, there's a lot going on back there. I think I started this dude as a cylinder and I, I haven't really changed too much in terms of the profile. We do have some nice taper and some other stuff going on there, but for the most part, um, you know, we haven't really shrunk that back in too much. So if we can, we should at least attempt to shrink this just a tad. Oops. We'll try not to break everything too much. Let's see. So it feels like mousy or um, hamstery to me, which is why I'm attempting to get rid of that roundness, at least a little here and there. And I think it's starting to help out a little bit. I think there's a few other things that are really doing it, like the shape of my ears are making him feel more, more like a Hamtaro type character. So let's see uh, what we can do with these. They're further back from what I can tell, actually. Hmm. Hmm. 
I'm not sure if that helps or makes them worse, but we'll play around here for a little bit. Now, I think the silhouette is there, it's just something with the roundness or position of these is really throwing me for a loop. Like without polypaint, does he feel like a tiger? I guess if we had this guy without uh, stripes and everything, he might feel a little hamstery as well. Head on back out of T-Pose and continue from there. So trying to focus on making some larger form changes just to push this guy out of hamster range. We don't really have a lot of information to infer about the width of this character or the profile view, so I have to kind of design a little bit of that myself. Just kind of looking at this from the three-quarter, making sure it feels like the same character and trying to revolve that form all the way around. It's not uh, not always an easy thing, especially for, for something like this, which is such fun and interesting shapes. A lot of room for experimentation. Let's see, how close is that? A wider base for the bottom of the ears. I think maybe we're getting a little bit too much taper in there. Might be the case. I will take a look in just a moment. Oh, whoops, I am selecting the wrong mesh. Do you think they're getting too small? Is that what you said? Uh, a wider base for the bottom of the ears. Hmm, I think we could probably go a bit wider. In terms of matching the actual shape that I'm seeing there, I think it's pretty close, but I think we could stand to go a wee bit wider. As long as we're still getting some taper there, I will be happy. Pretty straight line, I think. Let me look at my other one. Let's try that one more time here. All right. Starting to feel a little bit better. Plus, I think. Let's see. And the shape here from the profiles throwing me off a little too. Uh, how did you start transmitting? Is it free or do you have to pay for it? I'm not sure what you are referring to. Um, if you could be a little bit more specific or maybe use a different word for transmitting, might understand a little bit better. Uphill water, where do you work? Third person asked during our stream today. We, we just need to plaster it on the screen. Uh, I do full-time freelance work. If you guys wanna check out more of my stuff, there is a YouTube link somewhere up here. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Perfect. 
Um, yeah, you can check out my YouTube channel. Check out my Gumroad as well. Where's my browser? Gumroad.com slash Polygon. If you guys are interested in any of my courses, brushes, materials, uh, all the stuff that I use professionally to work. And then I have a ton of free stuff as well over on my YouTube channel, just YouTube slash Folygon. Google Folygon and you will uh, find all my jank, including my Gumroad, ArtStation, etc., etc. Turn off polypane on these, getting a little annoying to look at. We'll leave those for now and we'll return to them a little bit later. Let's delete our extra T pose mesh there and continue on with our boy. Uh, Conquer of Worlds asks Did you go to school for ZBrush? No, I did not. Uh, I went to school uh, for uh, essentially kind of like a new media arts degree. Uh, a lot of what I did though was in front end web design and web development. Uh, and some graphic design as well on the side. It wasn't until around my senior year of college that I discovered ZBrush. This was about five years ago and bought a couple books. I was actually on a study abroad trip in Tokyo uh, doing some uh, Japanese language study and uh, brought my laptop and um, um, like I said, a couple couple ZBrush books and went crazy. There wasn't a ton of uh, online content back then in terms of tutorials or people creating any kind of any kind of YouTube videos or anything like that. So it was books. Books was the way to go. Uh, but yeah, pretty much completely self-taught in uh, in that regard. I didn't really do any art before that in terms of like drawing, painting, two D. I did a little bit of 3D. Um, I started off just doing some box modeling, poly modeling in Maya. I was a little bit into animation at the time, uh, mainly just doing stuff in animation or in Maya, as well as doing um, some simulation type effects and stuff like that. So nothing too crazy. Then I got into ZBrush, digital sculpting, high resolution characters. A couple years later, got my first full-time job uh, working in the local Cincinnati area where I live right now, doing uh, full-time sculpture work for toys and all sorts of cool stuff. But yeah, that's pretty much how I got my start. But no, no ZBrush school. That would be nice. Only if I knew, like, five years prior. And I'd be like 10 years in, right? I can't imagine what I'll be doing in five years. Where do you see yourself in five years? What? <laughs> F off. Like, it's such, a, it's such a dumb question. Nobody can see, at least this early on in, in something like this, like, where do you see yourself in five years? I, I think it's a pretty dumb question. Cool. Coo -coo. All right. Whoops. I probably, come on, stop. I probably want to get those ears interacting a little bit better than I do right now, but I don't know if that's gonna be the final placement, so I'll just leave them alone for now. All right, what else do we wanna work on here? We need to fix this mouth, get that syncing up there correctly. Give this guy a quick zipper. I'm gonna use my cube tube brush, which is of course available on my gum road. It's a very simple brush, but it gives you some really clean geometry.
Oh, we need to go much smaller. Start off with something simple and straight. Whoops. Come on, give me the selection. Give me the selection rectangle. I had a feeling that there was a extra little piece of geometry in there. No worries, we'll fix that up. Switch our material and poly paint. And scale wise, it's probably still a little bit too thick, but we can always deflate that or play with it later. Let's just get a little bit of that, a little bit of that wiggle in there. A little bit of that unevenness. I also need to make the jacket feel uh, more thin. It feels way too thick right now. For the zipper, that'll be really easy to poly model. We'll just do that real fast. Uh, let's see. So we got a stretched segment. Make this a little flatter. We could use something like live booleans to create the hole. Kind of looks like a uh, pop tab or soda soda pop tab. Let's get in here and try a quick split and a Q mesh. Drag that all the way through, and voila, we've done it without boolean booleans at all. And using some transpose line tricks to snap. I think we'll be able to do this real quick. Make that chest bigger, more pronounced. Oh, we can, oh, we can do that. We can go, we can go quadruple C thick on this boy. Don't you worry. <laughs> I don't look that far myself. I'm thinking of the next hour. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Big bone. <laughs> uh, well, we're matching the silhouette pretty pretty well on the pelvis in terms of width. Might have to kind of taper some stuff in the legs a bit more. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll take a look. Let's finish our little zippy. Whoa, come back. A little zippy do here. We'll do some more there. I'm going to, I think, delete that edge loop. Complete. And try. And get a complete bevel here and there. As well as on this inner edge. Alright, that's starting to feel a little bit better. Let's Add in a supporting edge loop there, so that's not getting so stretched. And in terms of shape, let's get one more supporting edge loop. Oh, you know what? I don't want to do that. I want to straight up slide that in. The way I did that, it actually messed with my bevels which is not something I wanted. All right, uh, pretty close. Sure. Could be a little bit more thin in some areas. Doing some quick clipping tricks to make that flat. It doesn't really need to be 
flat though. I was just being a stickler for the form there. And let's just round it out a little bit more. That was weird. I don't know why it's being done. Here, hold on. Oh, come on. There you go. Alright, just trying to round that out a little bit. And also keep the tightness on the corners, which could maybe be a little bit less. Doesn't really matter. Like I said, just being a stickler on shape. Beautiful. Now we have a pop tab zipper. All right, the jacket feeling too thick. Faux show. Let's see. Well, our polygroups are all over the place here. Hmm, how do I want to do this? I don't really feel like deflating. Might just carve in a little bit. Uh, can you 3D print from ZBrush? Uh, yes and no. Um, if you know nothing about 3D printing at all, I'll say yes. Uh, but if you're, you know, three, you, you obviously need a slicer, soft, some slicer software so that you can actually get the layer information uh, for the for the file to print the object um, but yeah you can set up your files in here for everything except for you know the one step prior to uh, 3d printing to take your your object and essentially compute it for 3d printing it's called a slicer uh, chance chance red what's up what's going on man Kind of like a little bit off-white for that. It looks a little bit darker to me, but we'll keep it. We'll say that's fine. And for this geometry, this is probably too dense, uh, but I'll leave it. We'll say it's fine for now. I'll mess with some of the boring stuff off of stream if I make time, which I will attempt to do. Uh, this is, this is ZBrush 2019, that is correct. Uh, I'm trying to think of a quick way to do this, but probably just gonna have to be a little old fashioned here. making a quick poly group. Can I select this actually? Oh, I guess I can. Oof. That's pretty bad. So I'm trying to make a selection very quickly so I can mask some of this out. Well, okay. So that internal geometry is one poly group. My external geometry here. I'm gonna go to transpose master very quickly. Uh, so that I can move everything uh, on the geometry. Before I mess with the thickness, I want to attempt to just get the, the cloth a little bit more tight up against the actual form here. 
of the body before I play around with the thickness there. Let's see, grab a couple things here and there, go away, go away, beautiful. Using a pretty large move brush right now. Try to make this jacket feel a little bit more thin. Down there, it's actually hard to tell with the geometry I have right now, so let's just go check. That's not too terrible. Maybe some other stuff we can do down there. Let's try this real quick. Let me see. You know what, while we're here, who was it? Julian, Julian was saying we should get some more chest poof. So let's try it out. Let's get some more chest poof while we're here. We got symmetry on. Let's go mid. had quite a bit of chest poof before and I end up flattening mainly his uh, facial area. Hmm. <laughs> or wait, hold, hold on, hold on. Uh, what's it called? There we go. Hmm. Oh, no, wait, I gotta turn off symmetry. Hmm. Anybody? Anybody? Hmm. -ing. Hmm. Maybe a little bit bigger. Hmm. <laughs> For those that get that reference. Uh, let's see. I don't know if that's going to make him uh, get out of the territory that I wanted. But I am fine with the additional poof, at least for now. Let me just turn these boys off. These big guns. Oh, come on. Taper for me. I also want to get that harder uh, turn there on the side a bit more than what I have right now. It's getting a little bit too, uh, too soft. A new mask for the jacket. That's actually uh, what I was doing with my selection uh, polygroup tool there. Uh, but it's actually fine now. I don't think I'm going to need it. How would I compare 4R8 to 2019? Well, actually, I have, if you go over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Folygon, you can just Google Folygon and I'm sure you'll find it. I have... Uh, a video talking about exactly that topic, as well as, uh, I believe, seven videos. If you just go to my playlists, there is a playlist for ZBrush 2019, uh, where you can uh, figure out how to use all the new tools and features as well, for those that have not checked that out, or have not checked out my YouTube uh, channel. But in short, uh, I think ZBrush 2019 is awesome. There's some good improvements in there. Uh, in particular, uh, we got folders. Bing, bing, bing. Folders are awesome. New camera's great. Zero Mesher 3.0, wasn't expecting it. Awesome addition. There's some other cool little plugins as well as the new uh, filters and the Snapshot 3D tool, which is uh, a great addition for uh, people that are concepting hard surface stuff uh, very quickly. So check those out and yeah, kind of form your Formulate your own opinion on uh, the 2019, but I think there's a lot of really good stuff in there for sure. And there should be a link somewhere at the top of my screen for my my YouTube channel. It's not a clickable link. It's just YouTube slash Polygon.
Uh, let's see, how can I make clothing? Well, there are a bunch of techniques for that. And if you would like to follow along with the process, um, you can check out my YouTube channel. I have a, uh, just go to my playlist. This will be easier. Uh, I sculpted from beginning to end this, this Android 17 character, this dude, this guy here. So if you want to learn how I made the clothing for him and how you can kind of follow along and do a similar thing, I uploaded and streamed, live streamed the entire process of making this character. So uh, that is also available on my YouTube channel in the playlist. I'd say I would recommend that. Check that out. Or um, I have a new course coming out here soon that kind of goes through the entire uh, process of character creation. It's called uh, Mastering Appeal. I am uh, opening up registration in a couple weeks here. So uh, be on the lookout for that as well. I've been working on it for a long, long time. I'm excited to finally, finally announce it, finally launch it, I should say. I've kind of already talked about it quite a bit. 2018 did add a ton of awesome features, namely, uh, 2018. Is it 4R8 or 2018 when we got the Z Modeler brush? I think it was 4R8. I can't remember off the top of my head. But we did get that lazy snap feature, which is what I was talking about earlier uh, for working with um, lazy mouse brushes. In particular, it works awesome with like alpha strokes for seam lines and stuff like that. It is very, very cool. A lot of fun to play around with. All right, we're gonna block out that form change a little bit harder. Let's see, draw the line. It's about in line with our bottle here. So let's pull this down a little bit. Come on down. Way down yonder on the Chattahoochee. That's right. I know country music. Try to get that volume just a little bit closer, feeling uh, a bit too flat, in my opinion. Try to match that angle and try to soften out that transition just a little bit more as we wrap around towards the front of the chest. One thing at a time, right? All these small little changes add up very quickly. It's just a matter of taking the time to do a nudge here and a nudge there. And over a couple hours, you get some pretty, pretty nice stuff, some pretty good changes, like in the direction of that. Uh, if anything, we'll probably soften that, uh, that form change a little bit more. Uh, I do like the uh, a little bit more pronounced feeling that we're getting, but we don't have a super uh, hard or sharp shadow here indicating a super tight form. We do get a little indication of that on the side, which is great because it allows us to kind of flow and think about edge quality and fade this into the center of the chest. A little bit more like that. That's kind of what I was looking for. We'll play around with that more as we continue. I'm liking the direction. I think we want to get that feeling a bit more poofy from the three quarter. I think our gams are in the way. Let's go into T-pose for five seconds to make one quick change. Uh, an NPR render of him, absolutely. It will take like five seconds because I have a bunch of filters already that I've created. I'll show you one that I really like. Grab him, sure, fine, you can just go there. So normal render, right, with just the default settings. I won't change a single thing on this other than loading in my BPR filter. You can actually get this uh, filter as well as a few other others for free on my Gumroad. 
way down here. Here's the one that I'm actually about to load in and use. It's like this heavy paint filter that I've created. Let me load that in under BPR filters, load. And let's see, where are you? You are somewhere. Here you go. Heavy paint, cool. We'll zoom in a little bit. BBR filter away! Go, 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 go! Crash! Ah. So there's the, the heavy paint filter. It's got these... I, I, it didn't change the shadows or anything, but yeah. That's just one of the filters. Like I said, it's free. It's just one of the things that I was playing around with and experimenting with during the beta. So uh, there's a ton of different NPR filters to uh, play around with and experiment. This was just one that I, I played with. But yeah, check it out. It's free. So no, no harm done there. How did you figure out what uh, to he shape of the face with that reference? How to shape... Okay. How did I figure out how to shape the face with that reference? Uh, I have some videos talking about hits and breaks and the importance of your silhouette on my YouTube channel. I can recommend them to you if you're interested. I think they're pretty quick to find. It's uh, this face, this one. Uh, understanding form in 3D. There are two parts to it. That is the second part. What's a hit is the first one. Check it out. I think that'll help you out a lot. Um, but essentially, uh, paying attention, studying my reference, and understanding how to revolve a form in 3D. That's the uh, the Spark Notes version, the the real version. I think you should uh, check it out. I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of good info in there. Hence why I made it actually. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna play with the poly paint here in his face. We need to get this quite a bit wider. We're way off right now. Let's just kind of block this out real quick. Turn off perspective. Where's this? Where's this hit? A lot higher. Oops. Whoa. Not what I wanted at all. I can also do a little bit more of the poly paint for the stripes, which will help to really start this guy. Uh, really start to get him feeling like the concept. Paint is uh, a lot of what's going on here as well. As well as whiskers. I completely forgot about them because they're so thin. I can barely see them. Uh, but that shouldn't be very hard at all. What do you guys think? Some stripes or some whiskers? I'm feeling stripes personally. No problem, Chance. My uh, my pleasure, man. Let's see. We have like 20-ish, 20 20-plus 20 minutes. 25-ish minuets left. Let's try doing some stripes. This nose needs to... Needs to something here. All right, these stripes are very clean and very precise. So we could, here, let me see something. 
Tiger Stripes tattoo. <laughs> uh, I wanted to see how they connected on the back. So I think we're fine to just kind of like sync these up Pikachu style in the back. Or maybe we can do something else. I don't know. We'll see. The light part should go more towards the edge. Yeah, that's fine. It's a five second stroke. Probably even more so if we're looking at the angle. Let's say whoop, a little bit more. I'm going to be using geometry for my stripes, so it's not going to affect our poly paint. Uh, and I'm doing that specifically so that it doesn't affect our poly paint. Uh, what's great about using geometry is that you can edit it after the fact, kind of like using Photoshop versus Illustrator. You, know, you draw your Illustrator curve, and then you can edit it after the fact. But in Photoshop, you draw your pixels, and you got to repaint everything um, if you want to make some changes. So for this, like I said, we'll be using geometry. And I'll probably be doing this with some masking. Let's see. Let's go. Shush, neighbor doggy. Everything's fine. So start blocking out our first stripe. Using a quick mask pen. Let's turn off that head so it's not poking through. And they go from thick to thin, from what I can tell. So we are going to use an extraction technique. We're not going to be using the default extra extraction tools in ZBrush, but we will be using extraction. We'll clean that up in a second. It won't really matter. I could also use my cube tube brush to do this. I say we do a couple this way and then we'll maybe swap to the cube tube brush. But I want to show you how you can match something to your form very, very closely. And of course, you can turn on lazy mouse with your mask pen as well if you want to do that. But I don't, like I said, I don't need this to be super clean. Just need it to be quick and in the general shape. And I don't need to get too much of the taper right now. Just needs to be about like that or so, like this. Actually, Ooh, come back. I'm going to angle this a little bit better. So very messy, but that's okay. Let's see, where's this one go? You could also use your mask, um, mask lasso for something like this. I love the mask lasso tool. So start off with something like that. And then we start to get at least some of the general shape there of that curve, that mask. Oops. Swap back to your mask pen. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I can't really do that because I lost my previous masks. If I want to do this, I'd have to polygroup those with a quick control W. Doesn't really matter though. Let's keep keep trucking along here. There. Actually, uh, because we're kind of getting a little short on time, let me go ahead and stop here and use what I have already to show you guys at least the technique so you can figure it out. Uh, I'll duplicate this ju again just so I have just this piece. And I am going to select what I masked and polygrouped and delete hidden. So now all I have is this geometry here. Not super clean or, or useful right now, but with a couple quick processes, 
We can make that a lot better. So we can come into edge loop menu, click on group loops with the default settings. You probably won't need to change anything. It should be fine. Quick control W to polygroup everything and Z remesh down real low. We'll see how this does, but we want to probably make a couple quick changes here. I'll show you in a moment what we can do to make this a little bit better. So already I think you guys can start to see the direction that we're headed. So we're starting to clean up this curve. It's starting to give us some, <laughs> that's fun, starting to give us some nice stripes. But the, uh, the form isn't quite there. You can see that it's like breaking right where this turns. So to make this do what we want, I'm using the slice curve brush to cut in some, yeah, let's do a mirror and weld, to cut in some quick separation polygroups. Then I'll do it here as well. And we'll run another mirror and weld. And I'll turn off the line just so you can see the shape of what I've created here. So pretty simple, just a, a couple different poly groups, slice curved. We cleaned it up with uh, group loops. And now we're going to Z remesh with keep groups on. And we can up the poly count just to make sure that we're getting uh, a decent, decent shape here. So we'll do that real quick. And then we'll have, or we'll be headed towards a simplistic mesh that is matching our curve perfectly and is starting to get more towards the low poly shape that we want. So still very dense. I want to see now with those poly groups that, that we have, if we can do 0.1, if we can go that very, very lowest amount. We'll see what it does. I have a feeling it'll still break like it did last time, but you know what? Maybe we'll get lucky. No, I don't think so. All right, point two, please. Try again. Professor Bum, why, <laughs> nice name. Uh, why am I making a, a mesh instead of a texture? I explained that at the beginning of the uh, process because uh, I want to have something that is editable instead of poly painting directly on the tiger. I'm gonna get uh, geometry that I can actually work with and manipulate that is super duper clean and able to be manipulated after the fact. Whereas with something like this separation between these two colors, that's really easy and quick for me to do. If you're making this for something that's gonna be for real time, you would want to make this with a texture. Uh, but if you're trying to create something that's really clean, you can still use this technique that I'm not finished going through and then after you are finished, you can uh, use the new Z plugin, Intersection Masker. So we're not quite there yet, so we'll, we'll kind of finish up here and then we can maybe talk about that a little bit more. Uh, we're getting a little derp thing going on here, so let me, let me clean this up. I'm just gonna go through and delete some edge loops. Let me make sure that my Q mesh, my poly modeling is set to do nothing. Let me try that one more time. Okay, bridge, edges. So just some quick poly modeling here to set this up exactly how I want it. All right. I'm just gonna go through here very quickly. Delete like maybe every three or four of these, depending on how dense it gets. Whoa, or delete everything. Come on back. All right, so I'll just do this on one stripe here so you guys can get the idea. Not sure what I am. Delete, ah, oh, okay. I see. We'll see. I keep on clicking on the uh, face there. Even though it's set to do nothing, for some reason it is wanting to delete edge loops in that direction. So a little trick, if you have that set to do nothing, 
You can actually use the direction that the Z modeler brush is going on a polyface to actually make it delete that way as well. Just a little thing, but when I do it this way, it deletes everything. So even though that's set to do nothing, it's not technically doing nothing, I guess. Shush. Okay. So give me this blue one. We'll split this off. Like I said, I'll only do one so we can get the process down real quick. And let's see, we got a nice bit of taper here. Beautiful. We'll just kind of pull this in. Or you can use something like your move brush. I'll use my Z modeler brush and do some beveling of edge loops to get some tighter form in certain areas. Uh, we'll shift this edge loop over. Ooh. Get that lined up there. Another quick one. And we'll just kind of play with the shape here just a little bit. And then I'll show you guys in just a second here. So now we have geometry that, like I mentioned, is matching the curve of our surface perfectly, as well as we have something that is editable. We can sit here and manipulate this with our sculptural brushes, our move brush, our 3D gizmo, our transpose line, and we can even add some thickness to it really quick here. Extrude all polygons, bada bing, bada boom. Look at that. We got a stripe. We got some poly paint. And this is how I would do this if I was making this for, for production. I would, I would make this as clean as I possibly could using this technique. And like I said, after you get to this point, and we'll just do a couple more creases, make sure we're getting some nice, crispy, clean edge loops. Oh, you know what? That's fine for that little edge, I think. I got some bevels in there that help um, retain the shape along certain surface turns, and I've extruded that. Now we can start to manipulate this. Like I said, you don't have to poly paint it perfectly or, or create your texture perfectly in the first go. And we can sit here and manipulate this and start to work on this more. So that is essentially the process, and there are a lot of benefits to this. As I mentioned, if you are wanting to convert this to polypaint at some point, you can go up here in your Z plugin menu using the intersection masker plugin. All we'd have to do is append these two pieces of geometry together and run the intersection masker, and then we get a perfectly clean mask right here on our, our good old Tiger Boy, and we can play with that even more. But you can see that I'm looking at this stripe, and I'm like, ah, oh, you know what? I think this stripe angle could be, uh, you know, going up more towards the back, more more this direction. We, we need to angle that up more. So I can use my geometric brushes and start using something like the move brush and start pushing that up and manipulating that even more. So for something like physical production, this is how I would do this, uh, simply because it's going to be super duper clean and I can, you know, match the surface perfectly, like I said, play around with thickness. I would keep this as thin as possible and just have it be something that that kind of uh, represents the paint there. So again, you could also use the intersection masker, create a nice clean alpha and go from there. But this way we get something that's like as clean as we possibly can. Uh, we could even lower the resolution even more if we wanted to play with that. But yeah, I think you guys get the idea. Uh, there's a lot of room here for manipulation on the curve that we have, some improvements we can make. We can make this taper a bit better and start to play with it. And I like doing this a lot simply because, well, for a lot of reasons, but uh, another one is just because the poly painting tools in ZBrush aren't, you know, the best in the world. So the, the geometric sculpting tools are, though, so might as well use those to our advantage, right? And just to make sure that that is in there, it's hard for me to see the thickness. I moved this up and it's no longer um, matching quite as perfectly, but with a couple move brush strokes, I can eyeball that, line it back up, get it exactly where I want. And if I did a render of this 
with the uh, thickness about where it's at, you would never, you know, you'd be none the wiser. You'd never know that this wasn't a, uh, a texture on the surface. It would not cast a shadow or anything like that, especially with it being black. Ah, I see, I see, said the blind man. That's right. Sophia says, I am just learning ZBrush. You are the best. Thank you. Well, I am not the best, but I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Thank you very much. And welcome. Welcome to the ZBrush crew. Good luck on the, the ZBrushing. Let's get this part longer and skinnier. So look, it, it, right now it's pretty much, it's looking like poly paint, right? But I can use a move brush and like, wow, that's crazy, manipulate it. Awesome, I know. Hold, hold the applause. Now if you were doing something, like I said, for production, you wouldn't want to keep geometry for stripes, most likely. There might be a situation in which you do. Maybe a stripes peel off. <laughs> I don't know. They're just decals. They're like racing stripes. One stripe down. <laughs> so normally I would do all these at the same time, but I wanted to make sure that we had enough time to go through the process, and I only have like five more minutes, so I, I won't do another stripe. Maybe there's something else that we can look at uh, very quickly. If anybody has any last-minute questions, we can go through that. Uh, again, here I'll just very quickly shout out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Folygon. Uh, I've been pointing people towards some specific videos and tutorials uh, tonight, so Google Folygon and you should be able to find that, or just type it into YouTube. Uh, as well as my Gumroad, which is gumroad.com slash Folygon. I will share the link because the URL is not up there. It's being covered up by my little banner. So that's gumroad.com slash Folygon. I have a bunch of tutorials and courses on here, as well as um, some absolute beginner stuff. So if you're brand new and you're trying to get up and running in ZBrush as quick as possible, that is the entire reason why I made this, as well as I have some more intermediate and advanced stuff as well. Uh, as well as some base mush, base mushes, base meshes, brushes, materials, my custom UI, all the stuff that I use uh, to do my work here, as well as some freebies. We were talking about the NPR filters before, uh, and I did the the heavy paint here. We'll, we'll do it one more time here this heavy paint filter uh, If you haven't checked out my uh, new tutorials on ZBrush 2019 uh, You can find the download link for that in there or of course. It's also available on my gum road uh, For for free. So there's that heavy paint filter. He's only got one sad little lonely stripe there He's gonna need a few more but um, yeah, just kind of experimenting with the NPR filters when I was in the, in the beta test. And these are a few of the, the different filters that I came up with, or here's one of the few that I came up with during that time. But yeah. Yes, the new course is coming out soon. Uh, in just a couple weeks, I'll be announcing some more information about that. What's up, Mirma? Mirma Yola. I thought it was a YOLO. And that made me, made me remember the good old YOLO days. I don't know if they were good. <laughs> um, yeah, new course, couple weeks coming out. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Whoo! I inhaled that water. If you guys want to hear more uh, about that, then uh, probably the best way is to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'll be uh, uploading a trailer here in the next couple weeks to uh, talk more about specifics. And I'm also available on social medias to answer any questions that you guys might have about that or anything else. I'm always uh, looking for new ideas for, for videos and stuff. So I do critiques. If you guys want to send in some Z tools, some ZBrush files, I will take a look and probably upload it on my YouTube channel as a video. So if you guys are interested in crits or anything like that, or just have specific questions, shoot me an email at uh, folygon at gmail.com and I'll check it out. Uh, the secret is in the water he drinks. Shh, 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 shh. Don't tell anybody about my secret, my secret, uh, What's it called? Uh, Mike's secret stuff from Space Jam? It's Folly's secret stuff. <laughs> oh no, Tony the Tiger reference. Bill, Bill. <laughs> You're great. Um, anything else before we bounce? Ren, what's up, man? Tiger looks great. I can totally see how he would animate. Yes, for 
For sure, for sure. He'd be a fun character to see, see walking about. And <laughs> maybe with a couple more stripes and some additional work in a few more areas. But he's really coming together. We're kind of uh, nearing the nearing the bend on finishing him. I'm not seeing any uh, additional like last minute questions or anything. So we'll just like noodle around here for a few more minutes, and then I'll bounce. But yes, this this dude would be awesome to see animated for sure. I'm gonna turn off my poly paint here. We're gonna we're gonna take a look at this guy. Just grayscale couple things here in the legs that I want to fix. This, um, this bend from the back. Oh, there's some, there's a thick boy. <laughs> we'll, uh, let's adjust these legs a little bit. I'm wondering if I can get that, that line a bit more flat. So get a little bit more of a straight there. So we got a bit of a curve on the front. Hmm, I'm thinking. If I can also blend this a little bit better, I think that would be nice. I'll just play around with the shape here and the legs just a tad more. ZBrush, it's more than good. It's great. I have not seen a uh, Frosted Flakes commercial in ages. I haven't really seen like a serial commercial in ages. I don't watch uh, watch TV very much. I don't have like cable or anything. It's just uh, just Netflix and good old YouTube. That's about it. And TV in God knows how long. Eh. I'll probably work more on this before the next time I stream here next Tuesday. Oh yeah, I should mention. I do streams here on the ZBrush, Pixelogic ZBrush Twitch channel. Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, all the all the things. Every Tuesday at uh, 6 p.m. EST. So if you're around, definitely come and hang out. Ooh, whoa, that is fun. I'll be able to close those holes up later and get rid of his... Uh, his tiger toe, we'll say. <laughs> All right. I'm getting a little messy through here. Uh, any idea how my course will compare to Shane Olson's? Why, I, I've, I, I've never taken any of Shane's courses, and I don't really know a lot about Shane's courses, but uh, for some information on my course, it is a seven week long program, a little bit longer than seven weeks. Uh, it includes weekly lectures that average about an hour in length. Uh, there are also live, uh, live sessions for Q&A. There is homework each week as well as uh, feedback on your homework. So critiques each week, uh, private, private uh, videos, etc. So those are like the four for kind of like main sections. And like I said, it's seven weeks long. It's a whole thing. Uh, it's called Mastering Appeal. The entire idea is that, you know, there's a lot of content out there that will teach you how to use software or, or how to sculpt something really specific, but there's really not a lot that goes into the mindset and kind of mentalities, mental tools, let's say, uh, required for uh, sculpting nice stylized and appealing characters. And I wanted to make something like that. So I've spent the past about six months, over over six months now, almost going on seven, uh, working on this course to create exactly that. So if that sounds like something that interests you, uh, like I said, probably the best way to hear more about that is to just go subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll be uploading more info about that over there here in the next couple weeks when I open registration. But yeah, hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> Tiger Toe, <laughs> yes. Yes, really. Yeah, yeah, really. All right. I'll play with that more as well as the rest of this guy, like I said, a little bit, just kind of doing some cleanup here and there uh, before our next stream, as long as I can 
make time for that. But I got a lot going on with this uh, this course that I've been working on, so I will do my best. I'll do my very best to tiger it up before before next Tuesday. We'll see. I got a lot going on. <laughs> uh, answer your question. Answer your question before you even ask it. Beautiful. All right. I think that is going to be a beautiful NPR place for us to stop. There it is. <laughs> so again, I'll be doing the same thing here uh, next Tuesday at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. Uh, here in the same place. As well as uh, there's always new stuff going up daily over on my YouTube channel. So check it out. Just Google Folygon, Gumroad, all that's over there. Uh, I don't think I'm forgetting anything else other than definitely if you're new here, never checked out the Pixelogic channel, there's a ton of artists that stream here and hang out. So for sure, uh, click that follow or subscribe button, whatever it is down below. And I believe Jose is going to be streaming in just an hour after me. And you guys can go to their uh, the Pixelogic live streaming website to find out more about who is coming up in the future for, for the next month of streams. But <laughs> yes, gotta Insta, gotta Instagram it up, get my Instagram filters on. Uh, I don't believe that's, I don't believe there's any other questions. Uh, worked in a character artist position in the industry. Uh, yes, I have. Yes, I have. Um, I am officially announcing the course in the next two weeks. It'll be around the the end of this month. Uh, so about in two weeks now. But awesome. All right. I will see you guys next Tuesday. Have a great rest of your day. And it's great. <laughs> All right. See you guys.